Have you ever asked yourself what would happen to your brain if you stopped interacting with people altogether? No conversations, no eye contact, no shared laughs or arguments, just silence. Not for an hour or a day, but for weeks, months or even years. At first it might sound like an introvert's dream, but what if that isolation wasn't a choice? What if you were forced into silence, with no end in sight? This isn't just a mental challenge, it's a full-blown neurological event. In today's video, we're diving into what really happens to your brain without any social contact. From shifts in brain chemistry and emotional stability to the long-term damage seen in solitary confinement, we'll break down the science and explore the dark reality behind chronic isolation. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the Mental Dose channel and join our Telegram community, where you'll get early access to new videos and exclusive insights on personal and spiritual growth. Now let's get started. The human brain didn't evolve in isolation. It evolved in tribes, villages and families. From the earliest stages of infancy, social interaction isn't just beneficial. It's required for proper neurological development. Studies from Harvard's Center on the Developing Child show that infants who don't receive consistent eye contact, vocal tones or physical touch can exhibit developmental delays that persist into adulthood. The same mechanisms continue throughout life. According to neuroscientist Matthew Lieberman, our brains have a default mode that becomes active when we're not focused on a specific task, and that mode revolves around thinking about other people. Even in silence, our minds drift toward imagined conversations, memories of social interaction, or anticipation of future ones. The implication is profound. Our baseline mental activity is wired for social context. Without this connection, the mind turns inward in potentially destructive ways. The stress hormone cortisol rises rapidly in isolated individuals, flooding the system with chronic anxiety signals. Over time, elevated cortisol leads to memory problems, immune suppression, and even structural brain changes, including reduced hippocampal volume. This isn't about being lonely for a weekend. This is about what happens when the entire architecture of human connection is stripped away. Prolonged isolation does more than stress the body. It reshapes the brain's function and structure. One of the most profound shifts occurs in the prefrontal cortex, the area responsible for executive functions like moral reasoning, focus and planning. Without stimulation from social interaction, the activity in this region declines significantly. Meanwhile, the amygdala, the part of the brain that detects threat and generates fear, becomes hypersensitive. This rewires the brain to interpret neutral or ambiguous stimuli as dangerous. For someone trapped in long-term isolation, even a knock on the door can provoke a panic response. People also begin to lose the ability to accurately assess themselves. Social feedback, those thousands of tiny signals we get from conversation, facial expressions or shared activity serves as a mirror that helps define who we are. Without it, our sense of identity can begin to unravel. A 2007 study in Trends in Cognitive Sciences described this as a collapse in social reality testing, our capacity to evaluate whether our thoughts align with reality. This is why people subjected to severe isolation often describe intense internal monologues intrusive thoughts, obsessive loops, and even auditory hallucinations. The mind, desperate for input, starts to generate its own stimulation, sometimes in the form of imagined voices, memories, or delusional beliefs. What starts as boredom can quickly spiral into psychosis. Extended isolation doesn't just affect what you think. It changes how you experience reality itself. One of the most commonly reported effects is the disruption of time perception. With no cues from the environment, no conversations, no sunlight changes, no social routines, the brain struggles to measure time accurately. Days can feel like weeks, hours stretch into an eternity. At the physiological level, the effects are just as alarming. Sleep cycles deteriorate rapidly, 
leading to fragmented rest and vivid nightmares. Digestive issues emerge as stress hormones impair the gut-brain axis. Appetite may vanish. People often report losing weight, feeling cold even in warm rooms, and experiencing full-body tension or tremors. In extreme cases, people can develop somatic delusions, the belief that their body is changing in unnatural ways. This is a phenomenon well documented in inmates kept in solitary confinement, and similar effects have been observed in research on polar expedition teams and Mars simulation astronauts. Isolation can also cause hypersensitivity to light, sound, or even touch. In studies where people were kept in near-complete silence and darkness, participants reported hallucinations as early as the third day. These weren't vague visual shapes. They were fully formed auditory and visual hallucinations, music, voices, faces, entire narratives created by a brain that had nothing else to do but fill the void. The most brutal example of social isolation in the modern world is solitary confinement. Often used in prisons as punishment or control, inmates in solitary are typically confined to a small, windowless cell for 22 to 24 hours a day. The door shuts and the mind begins to unravel. In 2019, over 120,000 prisoners in the US were placed in solitary confinement. While some had committed violent acts, many were isolated for infractions as minor as talking back, refusing a cell search or being considered a suicide risk, ironically making their risk worse. Multiple studies, including research published in The Lancet Psychiatry, have shown that more than half of all prisoners in solitary develop symptoms of serious mental illness within weeks. Hallucinations, paranoia, dissociation, depression, and self-harm. And these symptoms don't always go away. Inmates who spend months or years in isolation often struggle to reintegrate into society, experiencing PTSD, emotional numbing, and difficulty forming relationships even after release. Before we go on, if this video is helping you see things more clearly, consider sharing it with someone who needs it. And if you'd like to support this kind of thoughtful content, you can click the thanks button below. Your support truly helps us create more in-depth videos like this one. Now let's continue. Around the world, the use of solitary confinement is being reassessed. The United Nations has called for an outright ban on long-term solitary confinement, defining anything over 15 consecutive days as a form of psychological torture. Countries like Norway have implemented radically different approaches. In their prison system, rehabilitation is the priority. Inmates retain regular contact with staff, attend classes, engage in group activities, and even cook their own meals. The result? Norway's recidivism rate hovers around 20%, compared to over 60% in the US. The lesson is clear. When people are treated like human beings, they're more likely to become healthy, functional members of society. Some US states have started to follow suit, limiting solitary confinement for juveniles or those with mental illness. But enforcement is inconsistent, and many facilities exploit legal loopholes to continue isolating inmates under different labels, like segregation or protective custody. This isn't just a policy failure, it's a neurological crisis. The evidence is overwhelming. We do not heal in isolation. We recover in community, in connection, in interaction. When we're stripped of human contact, the brain doesn't just feel lonely, it begins to malfunction. Emotional stability erodes. Thoughts lose structure. The body suffers. And for those subjected to long-term isolation, recovery can take months or years, if it ever happens at all. Social contact isn't a luxury. It's the most fundamental nourishment for the mind. Whether it's eye contact, conversation, touch, or simply the presence of another, these moments anchor us to reality, to memory, and to ourselves. If you found this video meaningful, let us know in the comments. What stood out to you? Have you ever experienced isolation in a way that changed how you saw the world? We read every comment and respond to many. 
And don't forget to subscribe to Mental Dose for more videos on the brain, human behavior, and the psychology behind our most pressing questions. There's a lot more to explore, and we'd love to have you with us. Until next time, stay connected, stay curious, and take care of your mind.